I built a camera. This is my Raspberry Pi cam. It's basically just a Raspberry Pi 4 plus a high quality camera module and the $35 screen I got off Amazon. But it's special in that you don't actually have to use a keyboard to take photos, unlike a bunch of the other designs I've seen on this website. Just a totally normal day out shooting with my computer. All you do is you turn it on, you run one program, and then after that, you just push the shutter button to take a photo. It's just like a normal point and shoot. I'm not gonna say that this is gonna replace your like iPhone or your Canon or your Sony, but you can build it, and you can build it for under $200 all in. That's including the lens, by the way. This is a $50 8mm lens, which is pretty wide angle, but the crop on this is kind of weird. This is a 16mm lens, which is a little bit better for close-ups, but what you can do is actually 3D print an adapter right here, and then you can use any of your Canon EF mount lenses. The issue you might run into is that a lot of them don't do manual focus anymore. The only ones that I have personally that can still be controlled manually from Canon is this thin 150 to 300 millimeter lens, which is crazy long on a uh, camera this size. Let me show you. I think the biggest drawback to this design currently is that it doesn't have the battery built in. So you do have to use an external battery pack, which is kind of an issue. Here's what I'm using. It's just this, I think, 20,000 milliamp hour battery from Canon, and then this like super flexible uh, USB-C cable. It still works pretty well, it's just like one extra thing in the backpack they have to carry around. So not as portable as I want it to be. One cool design feature I made for this is this right here. So you see the grip? It's actually removable. And you can just slot in any other grip that you want. So like if you want to have a bigger grip, if you have like bigger hands, or a smaller grip, if you have smaller hands, etc., etc. But all the CAD files, you can just edit them. Another thing I thought about is that a lot of cameras are designed for people that are right-handed. If you're left-handed, like, you can just use your right hand, I guess. I'm, I'm right-handed, I don't know. But it'd probably be nice if you could have the shutter button on the left. So with a design like this, you can make that happen. All you have to do is just take the button, move it over. It's that easy. To actually transfer the files off of the Raspberry Pi, I haven't integrated it inside of, like, website or, like, file transfer over the internet. So right now you just plug in a USB, transfer the files, take out the USB, then plug it into like your other laptop or whatever. And that works okay for now, but I would be super interested in trying to give the files to transfer over the internet. They think that'd be way more convenient. Part of my inspiration for pursuing this is that recently I saw a bunch of videos about the CinePi, which is a video camera based around the Raspberry Pi. And I was like, if you can make a video camera, can we just make a point and shoot? But looking back on videos that other YouTubers have made, most of them still require a full keyboard. Here's a video where Linus talks about it. To unlock its full potential, you'll need to have the know-how and patience to adjust parameters in command line. Which isn't really a solution to me. Like, I don't want to walk around town and then have a full keyboard I'm typing out on whenever I want to take a photo. I mean, this with a bright red wire hanging out of it already gets enough attention. Right now, the camera only shoots in like full auto mode. All you can adjust is focus and aperture. So ISO and shutter speed is fully automatic. I want to change that, and right now, today, you could just use a keyboard, but then we're back to the issue that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> like, the full auto is good, and like, I'll show some pictures on screen. It's not bad, like, it's a good photography camera. It's just like, right now, I still need to write the software to do aperture priority, shutter priority, et cetera, et cetera. What I would really love to integrate is focus peaking to just make it easier to focus manually, Personally, I use autofocus a lot on my other cameras, so having that little extra help would be really helpful for me personally. There's a few things I want to change about the case. Right now, you can access the USB ports, but the hole's a little bit too big, like bigger than it needs to be. You can access the power port, but that hole's also a little bit big, and there's no way to adjust the screen brightness. This screen doesn't get very bright, so I just leave it at 100% all the time, but I know that there's some times when it would be nice to be able to adjust that brightness down. And I would also love to have a way to store the stylus. Maybe something like how the DS's did it. Because it's just, it's so easy to lose. <laughs> I've already lost a couple. Another thing that I thought about is there's just so much more customization. Most cameras are just black. Like, that's it. <laughs> the entire camera's black. Unless it's like a little Polaroid or something you got from Walmart. That's the only color you're really getting. You can buy skins or wraps or whatever else, but I think there's definitely some advantages to being able to just make 
it, whatever color or material you want. I'm just imagining like a wooden camera. You can make a wooden camera, a carbon fiber camera. You can mix and match the colors. If you have like a multicolor printer, you can just print multiple colors. <laughs> you can like add your logo, add your name, add your phone number, whatever you want. Just put it right into the camera body. I think that's super interesting. I think I talked about it a little bit already. The camera grip is also fully customizable. So if you have bigger hands, you can customize that. If you have smaller hands, same thing. All you do is you just remove these three screws. And then as long as you have the mounting holes on the bottom, you can design whatever you want. So you want to have a really big grip, that's fine. If you want to like move it all the way to the left, as well as the shutter button, you can do that too. It's fully customizable, which I think could really help people that aren't just right-handed, and like the color black and have like one random size hand. We need to customize this. People are not the same. And for forever, that hasn't really been an option. You could go aftermarket, but like who wants to do that? For like literally $2, maybe less, I can redo the entire case for this in whatever color I want that I have on hand. If I want to do something more exotic, like glow in the dark or wood or carbon fiber, that's just a couple bucks more. All the files are fully available. Stuff that I want to change on this is mainly the screen. Resistive touch in 2023 is just, it's not great. And using a DS stylus to control something does bring me back to my childhood, but not necessarily in a great way. I feel like if I get it closer to a smartphone than a DS, that would be best for just about everyone. Those screens are a little bit more expensive though, so we'll see what I can do with that. There's a little bit of image lag whenever you're panning with the camera. It's kind of hard to describe, but I'll show it on screen. I don't know exactly how to fix that. I've heard that it's kind of something to do with memory buffers and the amount of like RAM they have assigned to everything. I've tried to max out those values, and this is an 8 gigabyte model, so that should resolve some of it. But I can't go past five buffer frames right now in the current software or else it just says out of memory. Which is weird, because if you do the lib camera hello example, it's like very smooth. And I would like to figure out like what's going on there, but that's for future me, I guess. For prototyping, I really wish I had the HDMI port exposed because right now I can only use this tiny screen to program on. So that's not great. If I could plug it into a larger monitor, that'd be really helpful for like debugging code and then pushing updates, but it's okay for now. I would also love to have this cable more protected. It's just kind of out there. It's too long is the issue. And I don't think I can just cut it and then like change the uh, length of it without damaging something. I don't trust myself enough to do that. So I need to like buy a new cable and I'll be looking into that. One thing that I'm really proud of with the design is that it has captive things for the pillars. Like the standoffs have a little hexagon shape but I actually 3D printed an adapter so it fits right down inside of it, which prevents it from turning. So it's way easier to tighten it in now. I was gonna go with brass inserts for this, but I don't have any on hand. And being able to just like make it captive made it way easier to design around. I've had so many different revisions of this case, and this one's just the best so far, <laughs> but I'm sure there's a lot more that I can do. I have some pictures of the original design, and it was just painful to hold. If you don't wanna hold the camera, you probably don't wanna use the camera. I think having tools that are easy to use, fun to use, comfortable to use is very important. If I have a hammer that hurts me every single time I use it to nail in a nail versus one that doesn't, I'm gonna use the one that doesn't. And this camera was stabbing me. <laughs> this improvement is a lot better. I rounded all the edges and it's much nicer in the hand instead of just stabbing me and having wires sticking out at every angle. Now the only wire sticking out is just for the camera cable but that really doesn't get in my way most of the time. Well, that and the power cord. For anyone who made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I plan to make a tutorial soon detailing the entire build process from software to hardware, as well as creating a GitHub with all the software links and the CAD files. If you're interested in watching that, please subscribe and have a great day.